Butler is back on the BT couch. His name, Charles McPherson, and you brought props today. I did. So uh, let me open it for you and uh, get us started. We're talking about the art of the toast, and uh, there is a technique that uh, we have when we get the sparkling wine out. Absolutely. So the first thing that you do is you take off just the metal cap, and then you're going to uh, take down the cage, and you're going to open the cage. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is you don't actually take the cage off. You hold it. Make sure you don't point at anyone, and you're actually turning the bottle. You're you're not actually turning the cork. Mm. And as you turn the bottle, in theory, <laughs> okay, I can feel it now. The pressure inside the bottle will, here we go. <laughs> Slow release. There we go. Slow release. Exactly. All in control. Now, do you know how to pour into a glass properly? Uh, I have my own method, but I'm pretty sure it's wrong. So I'll, it's just <laughs> so lectures. It's called priming the glass. And so what you do is you put a little bit in the bottom of the glass, and that allows the bubbles to go down. Because if you keep pouring, then you just get too many bubbles. And then once it kind of calms down, then you can finish the glass without it overflowing. Okay, I'm with you on that. I, you know, that's that's kind of what we do in the household and, and get the, the drink ready for the toast. I'll there you go, up. sir. Thank you. Now, how do you hold a champagne flute properly? By the base. Aha! I'm impressed. Okay, I'm here. Now, one of the interesting things that came out of this is you said anytime we toast, there's the tradition of clinking. However, you're saying that... You're technically not supposed to clink. So you're what? supposed to go towards each other or up like this, but yeah. you're technically not supposed to clink because you have the chance of breaking the glass because they're thin glasses. So what is the history of the clink then? So when we used to have tankards, when people were drinking, you know, ale or beer or wine, something, you would hit each other's tankards because you wanted the liquid to go into the other person's drink to see if they were going to poison you because then you were sharing the same liquid. Mm. So that was the original reason for it. But today you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> okay, so well, say you want to toast someone way at the end uh, of the table on the other side. What's the etiquette there? So I would say, so, you know, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to make a toast and then you stand. And that's the, I think it's really important that you get everyone's attention. Keep it short. Say, you know, I'd like to be here to celebrate, you know, Riaz, you know, your 40th birthday. It's great to be with you. Almost May there. we have many more. <laughs> Don't <laughs> let the gray hair Making you yet. older oh. than you are. Yeah. May we have many more, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me uh, in a toast to Riaz. Okay. For his 40th. The art of the toast in terms of the, the written word, toast yes. versus speech, and what are the most common mistakes with the words that are shared? Great. So a toast is something very brief. A speech tends to be a story, and the the biggest mistake is that they tend to be too long. Okay. Keep them short. The shorter they are, keep them wanting more. What's short? Are we talking 30 seconds, 60 seconds? So it's just, you know, for example, have you ever been like to a wedding or to a business function where someone, you know, is giving a speech and you're like, oh my gosh, is this ever going to end? Yeah. So, you know, keep it short. So it, it, it depends on the, on the particular situation, what's appropriate. But, you know, usually five, eight minutes is kind of long enough, you know, uh, and then say thank you, goodbye. What's your formula for uh, humor, sincerity? What, what do you find wins out in the end? I think there's nothing better than sincerity. I think let humor happen naturally. If you try to force the humor into it, it tends to fall flat. But if you can really be empathetic and sincere and people can follow you emotionally, that really actually does the trick. And speaking of emotion, say you're really nervous when someone says, hey, I need you to toast uh, someone that's moving on or a big life event, it's an anniversary, obviously you said wedding. How do you conquer the nerves for the toast? You know what? It's really hard. And so, you know, it's about practice practicing, you know, and so maybe you practice with your family, at, you know, at the table, you know, at home, you just stand up in front of everyone and practice toasting. Because again, remember, etiquette is about making other people comfortable, and it's about practicing a ritual. And so the more that you're comfortable with it, the more comfortable you are socially, and then, of course, people are attracted to you when you're comfortable and confident socially. Okay. So that, that kind of toast, you need to make it, pick one thing about that person, say it well, and move on. I like that. And eye contact the whole time when we do the toast. Very important. What happens if you break that eye contact? Well, I don't know what happens. Isn't there some myth of some I, know, I have no idea. <laughs> we'll leave it right there. Charles McPherson is his name. He is the butler. We won't click, but I'll raise my glass to you, sir. Cheers. Thank you for the etiquette. We'll take a break. We'll enjoy these. More to come here on BT.